Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the What's It Like Arena, where we are hosting our first free-to-view series showdown. In one corner, wearing the definitive edition shorts, is a trilogy that needs no introduction. Somewhat classic, somewhat controversial, but always original, Grand Theft Auto. And in the other corner, sporting the purple package trunks, is Saints Row, often reduced to being called a GTA clone. But does it have what it takes to set itself aside from GTA and grab a Switch owner's attention? With that in mind, let's get ready to rumble. Before we sound the bell for round one, would you mind liking and subscribing? It's the best way for smaller outlets like What's It Like to be found, and I can't thank you enough for doing so. Also, if you like the idea of this video series, let me know what I should do next in the comments below. Now we've gone over the rules in the dressing room, but for those in attendance, this is how this showdown is going to work. I won't be talking about GTA 5, which is arguably one of the best open world games ever created, because we are only comparing the titles that are available on the Switch in the two packages, which are the GTA Trilogy Definitive Edition and the Saints Row Purple Package. Now I know it may seem unfair because while the GTA Trilogy has three games and Saints Row only has two games, we'll be taking a look at the gameplay, graphics, performance and features to see which one comes out on top. Saints Row does have an advantage of being a more modern game developed in more modern times. Now, as always, I welcome respectful discussion about the video. You don't always have to agree with the judge's decision, so let's have some fun and get to it. Round 1 will start off with graphics and performance. The definitive trilogy of GTA had a significant change in graphics with this iteration, adding new effects, damage models and model upgrades. Unfortunately, on the Switch at least, the graphics have a distinct haze or blur, and there's a metallic look to everything, somewhat making the environment seem more artificial than the original versions. Compare this to Saints Row, which may look dated to some other games with a more grain-like effect rather than blur, but Saints Row did indeed come out 10 years later after the original GTA 3, having technological advantages in favour of the newer series. Performance-wise, both games managed to hold decent frames, even in the thick of the action, with GTA being consistently better at the cost of visual fidelity. Saints Row tends to have minor jitter in both 3 and 4 when things heat up or travelling at speed as it loads into new areas on the fly. GTA seems to get a few lucky hits in here, but I feel like this round does go to Saints Row due to its advantage with a more modern engine, and the definitive upgrade actually made GTA lose out on some details and things that made its art style so special in the original versions. So round one goes to Saints Row. The gameplay round will be split into four turbo rounds, starting with mission structure. The missions in GTA are well executed and largely kept seated on the grounds of realism, creating a gritty feel whether tackling a sneaky car bombing while your target is eating lunch or shooting out with a rival triad or even chasing the damn train, CJ. Saints Row's missions seem to be more bombastic and over the top, ranging from fighting aliens at the White House or skydiving out of a C-17 while shooting opponents mid-ball. Again, Saints tends to have the advantage here with the more modern mission structure, so the mission design of Saints Row wins this round. When it comes to gunplay, the GTA trilogy has reworked modern controls which certainly make it a bit easier to fight your way out of things, but it's still rather dated, whereas Saints Row has a combination of melee and ranged attacks which makes combat fast, fluid and exciting. Again, points to Saints. Driving in both games is fun and exciting, but there's something that GTA has never been bested at. While in Saints you can do everything GTA can do, GTA seems to handle the physics so much better, creating a more realistic, yet arcadey feel that is balanced and reminiscent of the Sublime Driver series. GTA finally lands a hit to put a point on the board. And the final speed round here is open world. Is bigger and busier better? Saints Row has the advantage of cramming a lot of things to do in its open world, but Saints Row 3 and 4 also share an almost identical map with the world of Steelport, with some minor alien enhancements in Saints Row 4. The GTA trilogy manages to create a more immersive world despite having significantly less to do, 
by varying its setting with each game. GTA 3 is obviously New York, Vice City, Florida, and San Andreas is Los Angeles. Where Saints Row tends to have more gameplay mechanics variety, GTA offers a more diverse and varied world to explore, allowing the GTA Definitive Edition to land another point on the board. So with those four speed rounds out the way, the judges are declaring the gameplay round a tie. The narrative will also feature three speed bouts starting with story. Saints Row tends to be an absolutely wild ride from the start to finish in both 3 and 4. Saints Row 3 sees the Saints as pop culture icons fighting their way up the chain of organized crime to take over the world. And Saints Row 4 sees the results of that as you start off as the President of the United States fighting aliens in a Matrix style reality. Saints Row tends to rely on zany and crude humor to push the envelope with what they could get away with, resulting in a funny story that leaves the players asking themselves, how did they get away with that? And with that said, the shock value eventually wears thins at time to become an exercise in adding as many swear words as they can into the narrative. GTA, on the other hand, plays out more like a social commentary, character of life in the United States originally going for shock value but evolving in time over the series to tackle issues like systemic racism, glorifying weapons and violence, over-sexualization of women, and censorship. It's actually handled really well in a similar vein to how South Park does it, bordering on the ridiculous while making light of hard-hitting topics. GTA very clearly hits Saint Throw here with a quick 1-2 combo to add another point to the scorecard. Despite the well-written story of the GTA series though, Saints Row hits back with a huge variation of wild and out there characters, full of personality like Johnny Gat amongst others, as opposed to GTA's cookie cutter stereotypes. Sure, characters in GTA may have different motivations and agendas, but they don't really do a lot to separate themselves from each other. Both feature great voice acting, but Saints Row talks loudly and proudly in this case, point to Saints. And where would we be without soundtracks and radio stations in all this storytelling? Saints Row features some amazing tracks from Deftones, Junkie XL, Kanye West and even Mozart as you rampantly trundle about town causing all manner of chaos. There's a fantastic mix of rap, techno, classics and rock to tune in while cruising. GTA Definitive Edition lost some of those tracks with licenses expiring but has the advantage on this round with a wider range of soundtracks covering the 80s through to more modern times, featuring artists like Flock of Seagulls, Yes, Pantera, The Outfield, and even Leonard Skinner. Combine this with the comedic stylings of DJ Laszlo and the over-the-top ads and talk shows, and it's clear that GTA scores a point in the soundtrack department, also claiming victory in the narrative round. For those keeping score, we are all tied up on the scoreboard at the moment, and it's anyone's game, but as we head into the final round, I want to assure you, there will be a winner declared at the end of it. The final round comes down to what game is ultimately more enjoyable, replayable and immersive. And Saints Row comes swinging out the gate with varied game mechanics and a lot to do, but ultimately runs out of steam with repetition. I feel like this is really affected by the overpowered abilities in Saints Row 4, removing a lot of the challenge of the game and grinding the satisfaction of achievement to a halt. Both Saints entries open up strong with large set pieces, but eventually I found myself aimlessly running around Steelport, causing mayhem and free roam with little to no challenge. The GTA Trilogy Definitive Edition is more of a slow burn, unlocking new areas to explore and activities to partake in, making it a more immersive experience. Now I've replayed GTA 3 more times than I care to admit, and I even got sidetracked while capturing footage for this video, because I just really enjoyed it. And even though I feel the definitive moniker is anything but, and it's certainly not without its issues, the GTA trilogy manages to tell a captivating group of stories over three decades that still hold up to this day. Despite its shortfalls, the GTA definitive edition scrapes through to be the winner by decision as we go to the cards. Both franchises are great in their own right and offer two very unique experiences while following a somewhat similar format. Reflecting on GTA's legacy, this should have been an easy victory by knockout, but the definitive edition, no matter how modern it may claim to be, did the opposite as intended and worked against a lot of things that make GTA 3 
Vice City and San Andreas so great in the first place. That's not to discount Saints Row in the slightest, as it brings its own unique style of flair to the open world crime genre, and this close fight would have been even closer if Saints Row 2 was available to play on the Switch. Now, even though I'm done refereeing this bout, I want to know what you think. Keep in mind, this is only between the games that are on Switch, which are the GTA Definitive Trilogy and the Purple Package. Tell me your thoughts! What game series would you like to see duke it out in the next round? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it. The best way you can support me is to like and subscribe and continue watching my content if you enjoy it. But if you do want to go that bit extra, you can buy me a coffee or join our Patreon which shows you behind the scenes of this channel. Thanks again.